guys, how are y'all today? I am coming to you tonight with a special request from my daughter. She wanted me to teach y'all how to make homemade white bread. And last night she was telling me that my granddaughter, who is two months old, was watching me on the TV. So, hi, Miss Emma Ray. I love you. Let me get everything together and we will get started. All right, so the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kinda go over our ingredients. And in the description box, I have put um, the whole recipe and then I even put a link to the silicone bread pans that I use and the um, the yeast that I get from Amazon. And I'm not an affiliate, so I don't get anything off those. So the first thing we're gonna do is five to six cups of flour. So I've got five cups right here. And then here's my six. We're gonna keep it separated and you'll see why in a minute. I have one um, and a half teaspoons of salt. I have one and a half tablespoons of instant yeast, one half cup of sugar, one fourth cup of vegetable oil, and two cups of warm water. So this is all you're gonna need to make this. And the first step that I do is I keep my house kind of cold, so I always turn my oven on because you're gonna want this to rise um, for about an hour in a warm environment. So I turn my oven onto the lowest heating setting it'll go just to preheat it. And then um, once it's preheated, I turn it off so that that way whenever I put my bread in there to rise, it's not going to cook it. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off because it's already preheated. So what you'll do first is you're gonna start with your two cups of sugar, I'm uh, sorry, two cups of water. And we're gonna pour those into the bowl of a stand mixer. And if you don't have a stand mixer, that's okay. You can do it in a regular bowl and then just you'll just knead it with your hands. We're gonna add the one fourth cup of vegetable oil. We're gonna add the one and a half teaspoons of salt. And we're gonna add the one half cup of sugar. And it's just plain granulated sugar. Okay. Now, if I was using um, regular active dry yeast, I would put that in here at this time and I would let it set and proof for about five minutes or until it gets kind of foamy because that's warm water and the sugar helps to feed the yeast. But because I'm not doing um, active dry yeast, I use instant yeast. So I put this in with my flour. So I'm gonna set this over here with my um, mixer. Now, what I do is I take my yeast one and a half tablespoons. I pour it in with the five cups of flour. I take a whisk and I just kind of mix it in there. It ain't gotta be perfect. Cause this yeast doesn't need any proofing because it's instant. So I'll probably make a mess cause I always do. So now that I have this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here to the stand mixer and I'm gonna show you how we start to combine it. All right, so you can see I've got all my stuff in here, my water, my oil, and my sugar, and my salt. And I'm just gonna lock it real quick, turn it on, kinda let that kinda get a good mix in there. Okay. Not much, it's just kinda mix it a little bit. So then we're gonna start with the flour and we're gonna add this flour one half cup at a time. And I kind of add it a little fast. Uh, it doesn't have to be like completely mixed before you mix it in. So I just take my half cup and I'm just gonna pour it in and turn this on low. Mix it in. And I 
always make a mess doing this, always. In my KitchenAid, when I'm kneading this bread in this mixer, it literally wants to walk across the counter. So that's why I have this little mat underneath it because then it won't, it's not as loud. And I have to hold it down. So we're just gonna keep adding. And I'm not gonna turn the speed up yet, not until it starts getting a little thicker. So you can kind of see in there right now, we're just a mixing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over here, that way y'all can see down in there. Maybe that'll be a little better. Go left-handed. So when the top of your thing here gets a little flour, I just take my finger and just wipe it off. It ain't gonna hurt nothing. I might be better left-handed than I am right. Well, not hand right anyway. All right, so you can see it's getting a little thicker. So I'm gonna turn it up just a, just, just a notch. Not too much because then you'll throw flour everywhere. So I saw a trick the other day um, when you're mixing like powdered sugar because mine doesn't have a shield. That's the one thing about my KitchenAid that I don't have. My Hamilton Beach had one, but I didn't have one in my KitchenAid. Um, and I know I can get one, but you take uh, plastic wrap and you wrap plastic wrap around it and it'll keep your, um, like especially when I'm making cookies and I've got powdered sugar for my icing. All right, so now we're just gonna dump this. Okay, set that to the side. Okay, clean off my top there. Okay, so as you can see, it's starting to pull in. See how it's kind of trying to clean the sides a little bit? So what you're gonna look for on this is it's got to clean the sides. And so this is where this other uh, cup of sugar comes in, or cup of flour comes in. You're gonna take it one tablespoon at a time and you're gonna drop it in. Because what that's gonna do is help keep it, it's gonna pull in more and it's gonna, you'll see, it's gonna clean off them sides. And on the bottom, you're gonna wanna have it attached only about like a quarter. And I'll show you what that looks like too. So you can see there, it's already flipping out. Turn it up just a tiny bit. Give it a good mix. Yep, there it goes, there it flies. You see how it comes right back to, it's not ready just yet. And just keep adding. Can you see in here how it's trying to start to pull away from the sides? And you see where it's starting to stick again? That's where you know you need to go ahead and add a little bit more flour. But you'll see how it's trying to pull away. That's what you're looking for.
Oh, we're getting there. See how it's dancing on me? Let's keep going. You'll think it's not going to get there, but it will. We're almost there. So when I said that you want it to stick on the bottom by like just a quarter, now your sides are not gonna be completely clean and that's okay. You'll see where the dough is stuck to the bottom of the, the bowl. And that's where you're talking about you want it to stick only about the size of a quarter. See down there how it's kind of sticking to the bottom? Nope, oh, can't see that way. All right. So now then what I'm going to do is um, this has to knead for seven minutes. So once this needs for seven minutes, then um, I'll come back because y'all don't want to see this go on for seven minutes. And I always set a timer. And when I come back, we'll do the next step. All right, so here we go. It's been our seven minutes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take um, my dough. I have gone in and gotten a bowl and I have put some oil in my bowl. I'm just gonna wipe the sides with it. And if you get it on your fingers, that's okay because it's gonna help you loosen anything that gets stuck, any dough that gets stuck in this bowl. So what I do is I take my finger with that, a little bit of oil on there, and that'll help you pull that dough off that hook. Clean it right off. I'll take this off. Off to the side, and then I take my dough ball here. I'm gonna take a little bit of oil on my finger, and I'm gonna use it, and I'm gonna help scrape this side. But you can see how clean we got in there. And if you need to reach in and get a little bit more oil, that's fine. So what we're gonna do is just keep pulling it off the sides and that oil on your fingers will kind of help it keep from going back and sticking back on that side. about them little pieces all right so now that our dough our bowl uh has our dough in it i'm gonna pull it out and i'm gonna take it and there's oil in the bottom okay and i'm gonna make it into a ball okay put it right down there in the bottom what i'll do now is i'm gonna cover it with saran wrap and then um Put it in my oven. It's going to rise for about an hour, um, maybe a little less because we preheated our oven a little bit. Um, you'll just check it. Once it's doubled in size, then uh, I'll pull it out and we'll be right back. I wanted to give y'all one little tip before I stuck this in the oven. I always take it and put it on like a... Um, pie plate, cookie sheet, or something like that. That way, just in case if it overflows, if I forget and it overflows, it goes on this and not in the oven. 
So, all right, I'll see y'all back. All right, guys, we're back. We're going to pull our bread out of the oven. And that was kind of a little warm. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, we are doubled in size. So all we do, and y'all see that? We're going to punch down the center. We're gonna set a timer for one minute. That wasn't the timer. Timer. And then we're just gonna knead it. And once we get this kneaded, then we're gonna take it and we're gonna put, we're gonna grease our pans. Now I use um, silicone bread pans. I like those better than glass or the aluminum ones um, or metal ones. And they seem to work really good for me. They clean really easy. The bread comes out, there's no sticking. Really, really like it. Okay, we have about 11 seconds left. All right, so I got that done. Now I'm going to take my two silicone bread pans, and like I said, I put the link for these in the description box. I'll have to clean off that counter or the stove top. So then I just take it and I divide it in half. Now it doesn't have to be perfectly equal. I don't normally do it equal. So I'm just gonna kind of roll it, make it into a log. Now you can do this in three pans and make three smaller loaves, or you can do it in two pans and make two a little larger loaves. It just depends if um I, I do both. I do both two and three. So I'm kind of going to just put it right there in my pan. Put this out of the way. And then because they're silicone, I always like to add some little stability right here and put them on that, that uh, cookie sheet. I'll put them in the oven. I'll let them rise for about 30 minutes or until they've raised about two inches. And then I'll... Um, Pull them out, and I'll start my oven to 350 and break. So, once um, I pull them out and get them ready to go in, I'll let you see what they look like before we bake them. And then we're almost done. See y'all back in a few. All right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to pull out my bread. It's not over the top, but it's going to continue to rise as we bake. So, all I'm going to do now is bake. Preheat at 350. Once that preheats, I'm going to put it in. We'll cook it for about 30 minutes and uh, until the tops are golden brown. And once we do that, um, once I pull it out of the oven, I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, see y'all in just a few. All right, so this bread is done. It looks great. We're gonna pull it out. It is nice and golden brown. So the only other thing that I do now is I'm going to take it off the pan, out of the pan. I'm going to turn it on its side to cool on a wire rack. The tip about cooling it on a wire rack on its side is that it will not um, uh, fall in on itself. Oh, that's hot. Yeah, these silicone pans do get hot. So, all right. What we're going to do is we're going to let that cool. And then when I come back, I'll show you the finished product. All right. Thank you, guys. See you soon. 
All right, so we are right here at the very end. I'm gonna cut me a slice off. So you can see, doesn't that look so good? Butter on that. I don't need all that butter on that piece. All right. Looks good to me. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. And, and I hope that when you make this bread, you enjoy it as much as my family does. And I want to give one last final shout out. Allison, thank you for the suggestion for the video. And Emma Ray, your lolly loves you. Bye.